What happens when you take a smartphone, an internet router, and ultra wideband internet access and combine them? Verizon 5G home internet. Verizon touts this as reliable and fast enough to power your whole home. And right now, that means availability to over 30 million homes in parts of 900 cities across the US. All right, it's adventure time. I mean, I mean, let's dig into it. Hey, if any of these videos on the channel have helped you, if any of the videos of my colleagues on the channel have helped you, please consider hitting us with that thumbs up, clicking on that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest content and run our amazing contests because we're giving away free stuff, y'all. So first things first, this service is not available everywhere, but should it be available to you, what exactly is the service? Well, it's Verizon's 5G home internet service, which is delivered via their cellular network, and it comes in two different flavors of availability based on your location, 5G Home and 5G Home Plus. The difference is in perks included with your plan. The former includes a two-year price guarantee, the latter a three-year price guarantee, unlimited Verizon Cloud backup, $300 off Bang & Olufsen's Stream TV offerings, the Stream TV Soundbar and Soundbar Pro, offered for $400 and $1,000 respectively. Both services come with $500 toward early termination fees for the service you leave, a Wi-Fi 6 router, Disney Plus for six months, a Verizon Stream TV device, two months of Sling TV, and one month of 5G home service. Since they're trying to get as many of you on board as possible, there are no data caps, contracts, or extra fees with either plan, and those on qualifying Verizon Unlimited mobile plans can get 50% off the monthly plans. First launched in 2018, the service has expanded to around 900 cities, promising 5G speeds up to over 900 megabits per second downloads in some locations with various outlets on the internet reporting 300 megabits per second average. Uploads aren't synchronous, topping out at 50 megabits per second according to some reports. What's on offer here ultimately is the promise of those ultra wide band near gigabit speeds for prices as low as $50 a month Remember, I asked in the open what happens if you combine a smartphone with a router? That promise of ultra wideband falls victim or victorious to the same issues as that of the smartphone, coverage. Or as they say, location, location, location. So let's say you hit Verizon's website and find that indeed your location is eligible for the service. The backbone of the 5G home internet plan is this router. Yes, it looks like an Xbox One with the vents in the top and the uh, pillar design. It is a dual band 802.11ax aka Wi-Fi 6 router with cellular LTE and 5G sub 6 and ultra wide bands built in. In the box, you get the router, a power adapter and ethernet cable. The front of the router has Verizon branding in the form of the red check mark and an LED status indicator. The rear of the device has a WPS pairing button and the bottom is where you'll find power plugs, two LAN ports and a reset button. Verizon said the unit is plug and play and on the bottom is where you'll find the info you need to plug in the appropriate password for your unit's Wi-Fi names and the URL, username, and password for administrative access to the router's core configuration functions, which you will want to get into. More on that in a moment. And that's pretty much it for the hardware. Two bands, two LANs, LTE, and 5G. 5G UWB. So, what was it like making 5G home internet the backbone of my home? Let's begin with setup and speed testing. 
Setting up as a cinch, it is plug and play, just like they said. Just make sure to place the router somewhere near an outlet. Just kidding, kind of. You're going to need to do more than just look for an outlet. Verizon says that you should place the router in the, toward the middle, the center of your home, near a window. My apartment isn't massive, but it isn't small either. So I, I tested the router both at a window here, this is actually my dining room, and in the back of the apartment in my bedroom, the master bedroom, with identical results. Speeds were nearly identical in both locations, pulling down 300 megabits per second and uploading around 30 megabits per second. I also had nearly identical results testing the effects of distance from the router when I went to the opposite end of the apartment from the router location. With the router in the living room or in the bedroom and me on the other end of the apartment from that, I measured approximately a 100 to 150 megabit per second loss of speed. So from 300, I went down to 200, sometimes 150. And with that, I decided to place the router in my bedroom for maximum speed since I do most of my streaming in my bedroom where my wife and I relax to watch our favorite shows on the weekends. For reference, my current provider is Spectrum Wired Internet over coax cable, and my personal router is a Asus Republic of Gamers tri-band router. That combination gets me over 300 megabits per second with only 20 megabits per second uploads. My personal cellular service is through T-Mobile, and on their 5G network, I get roughly 300 megabit downloads, though that's only occurred recently. For the longest, I was only getting 25 megabits per second, which is pretty sad for 5G, but still plenty fast for almost anything I do on mobile. Like I said at the beginning, this is basically similar to having a hotspot or smartphone and testing its data throughput, so I'd be cautioning you that your results may vary and could be slower than mine. But that's what Verizon's sign-up page is supposed to handle. In their small print, there's a bare minimum speed which should be delivered to your home. And by entering your address, that should ensure that you're in a proper coverage location to get those bare minimum speeds. And that was my case. 300 megabits per second, as far as ultra-wideband is concerned, isn't close to topping out at what is currently being offered, but it is competitive with what my cable provider, who is part of the artificially limited options in my area, is providing at a silly price. Since I don't bundle cable with my internet, I pay $90 a month for asynchronous 300 down and 20 up. To their credit, the service has been reliable and fast, but American home internet delivery is in serious need of competition, and I'm all for 5G home internet to help provide that. But before we can even talk about competition, what has my couple weeks of use been like on Big Red's home offering? In the beginning of the video, I told you that you're going to want to hit the router's admin settings and play with some things. Over the first few days of use, I was getting devices and videos buffering to a ridiculous degree and it was driving me nuts. I thought it might be the cell towers and a latency issue until I took the time to dive into the admin panel. This router has a feature called band steering. What this does is make it so that your router shows only one Wi-Fi SSID or broadcast name and then picks which network, the 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz network to put your device on when you try to log on to the router's network. I've tested other routers and mesh networks which do this and the results are always mixed. Some handle it well, others don't. Some, there are no problems and others still no problems until you try to print to a network connected printer or pass a file between network attached storage and a computer on the network. In this case, this router performed much better once I disabled band steering, but that meant changing another item. Once turned off, both bands kept the same SSID. So I appended the five gigahertz band with an underscore 5G. If I was keeping this to make the change over from the older router easier, I'd just name the two and five gigahertz bands the same name as the previous router's SSIDs, ICU and ICU 5G. That's what I have on my home, ICU. And this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Once you get into this router's settings, please, 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 for the love of BAST, change the router login password, and even if you don't change the SSIDs, change their passwords. So, with eight smart speakers, four smart TVs, 
a dozen or so light bulbs, multiple mobile devices, laptops and desktops, a ring camera and heavy internet usage because creating and uploading these reviews choose through bandwidth. How did the router and that 5G signal handle it all? Surprisingly well. Back in my bedroom where my smart TV is only about three feet from the router, not a single issue with buffering while streaming 4K Dolby Vision quality videos over Netflix or HBO Max. Being in my master bathroom, which sometimes experiences latency issues because of the amount of walls my router signal goes through, speeds were solid. Generally speaking, at the other end of the apartment, back out here in the living room and dining room area, streaming content from the new TCL 55 inch 5 series Google TV that I've been testing had mixed results. I did have some buffering and slow load times occasionally. I used my old router as the control, plugging up to Ethernet to verify that it wasn't the TV I was testing and maybe a slow processor, but was in fact that distance from the router. Same issue here at the workstation you see in the background of just about every video here on the channel. Speeds were fast, generally, but there were definitely some latency issues and some buffering. For me, working from the station, uploading and downloading content is mission critical. So if this were a permanent arrangement, I'd move the router out here to the living room and keep it here, servicing my social media and content creation business needs. To give you an idea of the distance, the workstation is approximately four walls and 43 feet from Verizon's router. One of the other side effects of distance is latency in your smart assistant speakers. Say a command and you may notice them taking longer to respond. This is something which can be mitigated by placing the router in the most optimal position in your home or by adding Verizon's $99 5G home internet Wi-Fi extender mini to your network if the reach of the router alone isn't cutting it. It says that starting at about 1,600 square feet or more is where you might want to start considering a range extender or adding multiple range extenders depending on the size. So how do my son's Xbox Ones fare? The router has one wall to go through for one son and two walls and a set of closet doors to get through for my other son. Ping rates were solid, speed tests were good, and the overall experience was solid. The results expected. My son, whose room is closest and with just one wall between him and the router, actually saw better results than he does with our Terminator Hunter Killer Asus ROG router. Better results on his smart TV, which buffers occasionally with the other router, and better results on his phone when mobile gaming over Wi-Fi playing Clash of Clans and COD. My son, whose room is further away, with two walls and a set of closet doors between his gear and the router, sees a 50 megabit per second decrease in speed, but the effect on his gaming has been negligible. So, let's wrap this up. Ultimately, I need much more time to thoroughly test this out because a couple weeks of testing hasn't shown all the potential bugs, but in this couple of weeks, I can truly say that I'm grateful to see this product and service on the market. No, they're not paying. Why am I grateful? Simple, competition, options. The product is solid so far, and so is the service. Again, so far. And with Verizon offering the service with no contract, I'd wholeheartedly tell you that if it is offered in your area and you're not happy with your current service, make the leap and check it out. And if you are one of those lucky folk who get that near gig ultra wideband signal at your home and you're on one of the slower cable providers, this is a no brainer. Switch today. The difference in speeds will be night and day for you. Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org. If there are any questions about Verizon's 5G home internet service that you have that I didn't answer in this review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I'll get to them. Any questions about this router, get to those as well. Don't take it lightly that you spent your time with us here today watching. I'll catch you on the next video.